What do people want more than anything else? Money? Fame? Power? Or the age-old ideal of true love? For centuries, the pursuit of love has been a theme that fascinates us and motivates us in many areas of our life. Books, films and music help to fuel this idea that everyone is somewhat incomplete until they find that one special person that makes them whole. But this idea of love being the ultimate goal is a relatively modern concept. As recently as the early 20th century, relationships and love were often mutually exclusive occurrences, whilst now it seems to have become a basic expectation. Aaron from Hull has had mixed experiences with online dating. Hi, I'm Aaron. I'm recently turned 22 and I like to use the social media app Tinder. I've been using Tinder for since my last breakup, which was probably about six or seven months ago now. I just wanted to get to know some new people. It's a good way to get like out of your already like set friend circle. I can I, I could use it as a platform to find friends, I think. Yeah, it is, but I use it primarily for finding dates. Tinder is a dating app for smartphones, which offers the users a selection of profiles consisting of a few pictures, an optional line of information, and the user's first name, age, and proximity. The user is then asked to swipe right if they like the person, and to swipe left if they're not interested. If both users swipe right to one another, they become a match, and are then invited to talk to one another, and the rest is up to them. Sophie is from Shropshire and studies media at university. She met her current boyfriend on the dating app Tinder. My name is Sophie, I'm 20 and um, I've been with my boyfriend on Tinder, like I'm up through Tinder for nearly six months. I've been on Tinder for about a month, just nothing, just like playful, not really looking for anything. I was like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I like them and just got started talking to him and we were speaking for like a couple of weeks got his number, started chatting to him, and it's basically how, and then it just progressed from there, really. Although the rewards of online dating can be plentiful, there is also a large element of risk involved. I'd make your own way there, I'll get someone to drop you off. I even, with my friends, said, do you want to go to the cinema? And I'll be next door in the restaurant, so if something happens, I can come meet you. And um, just a safety thing like that, like, it sounds like, weird but it is a safe thing like you don't want to get into a situation you don't want to be in the uk's online dating industry is estimated to be worth 300 million pounds a year and according to the online dating association over 25 percent of new relationships now start online so what is the appeal of taking the pursuit for love online guy works in tech support in huntington he has had some humorous experiences with the dating sites Plenty of Fish and Tinder. My name's Guy Smith, I'm 24, and my experience with online dating has been weird, would be the best way to summarise it. It's almost kind of a social experiment. Uh, weird, not entirely successful, but then I wasn't really looking for it to be a successful experience. But interesting, yeah. No harm done, but interesting. For me, the level of intimacy required um, over message for me to want to meet up with a person was 0%. Because if I was attracted to them uh, physically, there was no reason not to meet with them. Because in my opinion, trying to convey who you are as a person over a series of short messages is often ultimately pointless anyway. The thing where it's quite interesting is that you're meeting with someone who, if you're a guy like myself, and not particularly a small guy either, who you are far bigger and far stronger with. And quite frankly, it's crazy sometimes when a girl will turn around and say, cool, let's meet for a drink. Or even a couple, cool, do you want to come round to mine? Because you just think, are you insane? Like, I'm huge compared to you. You've got to be bloody mental to let me in your house. Or just to randomly go, yeah, let's meet up for a drink anywhere. And, you know, it reminds me, I was watching a comedian the other day who said the number one threat geographically, you know, all over the world, historically, internationally, to women, is men. 
you know, it's this idea of, you know, oh, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go on our day? I was like, I don't know, to your death, statistically. You know, it's fucking insane that we would go together and just randomly meet after one or two messages. So for me, I always used how quick they were happy to meet me as an indicator of how insane they were. So the people who I'd spoken to more, I generally thought we're probably going to get along a bit better because you've probably got more of a brain on you. Those people who were just like, yeah, let's meet up straight away. There's an argument to be made for spontaneity, but it's probably not a good one. David is a freelance photographer and student from Lincolnshire. I met my wife on a website called Omegle. It's where you um, get linked with people around the world randomly, webcam chat. There's a lot of um, not suitable stuff on there, I guess I would say. But um, generally, it was originally designed for people to go on and have a conversation. Um, so I was at home by myself, and my parents were on holiday, and I was pretty bored, and I was just wanting someone to talk to. So I went on, and after about 15 minutes, we kind of just got connected with each other. And then we ended up speaking for the whole night, and then we got each other's Skypes, I think. And then uh, from there, we just kind of sort of carried on talking. I didn't think I'd meet someone who I was going to marry. Um, I was just sort of looking to kill some time and just see if there are any interesting people out there to talk to. Yeah, um, but it is what it is. It just happened, I guess. Diane is a mother of two from Huntingdon and is retired. Following a divorce, she gave Match.com a try. I started online dating because I came out of a long relationship and um, I obviously wasn't very happy and friends of mine said, oh Diane, you must try online dating. So I gave it a whirl, but I wasn't really sure about it, but I did persevere for several months. I think people who haven't tried online dating probably are a bit suspicious of it, particularly if they're still married because they don't know what life is as a single person at, say, 50, 60. Um, so I think unless you've tried something, you, you perhaps are a bit sceptical because all you hear are, are bad stories about, about it, but it's not all bad. Lottie and Ali are housemates who go to the University of Lincoln. They have both dabbled with the app Tinder. Um, I chose Tinder because it's free, basically. <laughs> The student being all that, so. It seems to be the new thing at the moment, doesn't it? So everybody's getting on it. I just followed because everyone else was using it, so I thought I'd get involved. For some people, online dating carries a certain stigma. It doesn't really matter to me where I met them, sort of. See, for me, that is an issue in a way. Like, if people always ask you, oh, how did you meet them, and you say Tinder, I don't know, I don't really want that, but you can't help if you like someone at the end of the day, so. I know people in relationships out of online dating, so... Holly is a student from Shirebrook and has used online dating with friends as a bit of a joke. I didn't actually want to use Tinder in the first place, but I was with friends who were already using it, and I suppose I downloaded it for a joke because I was with them, and then it's only something that I would actually use when I was with friends. Dating websites, they have a stigma attached to them, so I know that I think it's seen as like that perhaps it's it's like pathetic that you can't actually, you know, get yourself out there and go and try and meet someone for the right reason, so for seeing what they're actually like, going and having fun, having a nice time. It's just easy to sit behind a computer screen and I think it's actually quite lazy to actually not push yourself and go out and meet someone because everybody can sit behind a computer screen and say what they are and what they're not but actually if you meet someone in real life you'll see who they're really like. Jack is an audio production student from Skegness. Following a breakup he tried his luck with Tinder but he didn't have much success. I'm Jack, I'm a student, I'm 21 and I'm a past user of Tinder. What I was looking to get out of it was just, I don't know, some sort of 
acceptance from someone else, help me get over a breakup. Um, I think other people have their different various reasons. Me, myself, it would be nice to have a relationship, but there's always that thing at the back of my mind that you have to pass the mum criteria. So would I take this girl back to see my mum? Now, if I tell her I met her on an online dating site, I think I'd get some odd looks from her. She'd get over it eventually, but initially, it'd... I think I can't be bothered with that sort of rigmarole with explaining to people, oh yeah, I met on online dating, they weren't a killer or something like that. David teaches psychology at the University of Lincoln and specialises in the study of human interactions. So I guess what I'm really interested in is understanding how people interact across different social contexts. So people often jump between the online world and face-to-face -face communication, a bit like what we're doing now. Uh, and I'm interested in what goes on between those interactions and also during those interactions. Um, I'm also interested in sort of individual markers of behaviour that might come from people's mobile phones as well. Online dating profiles often rely on a small selection of pictures and a few lines of fun facts intended to lure in potential matches with often tenuous mutual interests. When an online dating profile only offers such a condensed picture of a person, can anyone truly ever fall in love online? I think attraction governs the beginning of lots of relationships, so I'm not sure how that if that's got worse or if it's gone away, I don't think it will go away. I think if people have become more superficial, it's not because of online dating. I think it's probably because of lots of other things. I'm not even sure if it's superficial, it's just people's, what people's standards are might have changed and what their expectations are might have changed. Given what's advertised on TV and within magazines and in terms of selling products that claim to do X, Y and Z, online dating is perhaps no different in that it attempts to sell people a solution to a problem that may not actually be a problem. Uh, just because someone's got to a certain age and hasn't, you know, met someone that they want to spend the rest of their life with may not be, you know, may not be a particular concern to them. But Dane websites have a vested interest in convincing people that it's a concern to them. Joss is a student from Essex and uses the gay dating app Grindr. I was once asked by a guy on there without any hello or anything. I don't even think his profile had a picture. Um, he just asked if I could kick him in the nuts, which I obviously accepted because, I mean, if anyone gets the opportunity to kick someone in the nuts, I think they have to take it. Yeah, I had this one chick that was, had a pet horse and was, that was all she used to talk about. And I'd be like, do you want to hang out sometime? She'd be like, yeah, we can, me and you and the horse. And it was a little strange how attached she was to her horse. <laughs> I was swiping through one day really quickly. I don't know why I'm telling you this. Story. <laughs> and I got matched with a transvestite. Um, what, so you said yes to them? Yeah, because I was just flicking through really quickly, like not uh -huh. checking their bios or anything. And then I got matched with them, so I was like, yes, it's got a match. Because uh -huh. their bio it's like, I'm actually a guy. I was like, ah. Oh. So oh, I did leave. But uh, he never responded, so sadly that never got to, <laughs> to happen. But if you're out there, I am willing to kick you in the nuts. Any unusual experiences? I think that I probably was the unusual experience because I didn't really take it that seriously. One of the difficulties is that um, it's starting out, so you've matched with someone. Well, hi, hello, how are you? What do you do? You, is that a generic conversation that people are just sick of because they have thousands of matches or whatever? Um, so my friend told me a good opener, which is, would you rather change sex every time you sneezed or not be able to tell the difference between an apple and a baby? I think the best way to start an online conversation with someone that you've never met before is to discuss the summer job that you had working for the Italian Mafia in the criminal underworld because no one expects it, you can make it really funny. If you open with something generic and boring, it's generic and it's boring. If you open with something sincere or self-deprecating, even if it's a funny joke at your own expense, you either are dealing with someone who sees that as endearing but in the most negative of ways, 
or doesn't find it funny at all because they think you have a lack of confidence. You don't want to make a joke at someone else's expense before ever really talking to them. So I think the best thing is just to open with something that's funny, something that represents your sense of humour, but that they can kind of roll on from. So you would go from that, and if they joined in the joke, that's the perfect response, and then you build that into kind of normal everyday conversation. I always use cheesy shout, cheesy chat up lines, but you always tell me not to. But. They're so funny though, but they scare me a bit. I just like a high. I think that's a but bit yeah, boring. They, they're quite funny, but I don't know. Yeah, didn't get many replies. So they couldn't <laughs> like it. I liked them, Ali. Thanks. Um, try and pick something out that colour stands out about them and ask them about it. If you see like in the pictures, one of the pictures they were eating organic food or something, try and start a conversation about something you know they're interested in already. Because if you just go in talking about yourself or things you're interested in, you're not going to grab their attention at all. Catfishing is a term that has wound its way into our vocabularies as more and more people encounter users online who aren't quite who they claim to be. But if the aim is to entice someone into meeting up in the flesh, then why do people misrepresent themselves at all? Catherine is a feminist writer living in Milton Keynes, whose work often explores the complicated nature of relationships. I've never had an experience where someone hasn't been who they say they are, like the pictures have been the person, but I've definitely had it where the pictures were considerably younger, uh, where their description of their height was very inaccurate. Um, like a person said they were five foot seven, yet they were about the same height as me, which is five foot two. That's, that's significant. And I can see perhaps why that person might have done that. But did he think I wouldn't notice when I actually met him? So, yes, there's been the odd experience, but no horror stories. Everyone has been roughly who they said they were. I like to think that I represent myself. In a real way. It's very much when you're, when you're talking to someone, they'll be like, you'll just be talking, and they'll be like, oh yeah, have you got any more pictures? So I, what I usually do, I'll send them some nice pictures, and then I'll send them a really horrible picture of me, just sort of counteract it, because I'm like, yeah, this is me pulling a nice face, but this is what I look like the majority of the time. If I met up with somebody and they didn't really turn out to be who they were, it depends on how much they were lying, I guess. I'd, I'd be a bit bothered because, well, why are you lying to me? And then what else are you going to lie to me about? I think it must be quite distressing for people who meet someone online and it turns out to be somebody else. I never thought for a second that whilst we were talking it would be somebody else, um, purely because we video called pretty much every day. Um, I think it would take some sort of genius to be able to fake a video call with somebody else. I found that men generally were um, unfit, um, nothing like their photographs, but they wanted to or expected to meet a woman sort of like 20 years younger who was glamorous, fit, I'm not saying I am, but uh, they think that they are worthy of someone much better than they actually are. I think people probably misrepresent themselves online because it gives them a better chance of meeting someone. Um, they put a photo that's completely unlike them in real life because I suppose they're hoping that when they do meet up with someone that their personality might shine through and um, when otherwise, you know, a photograph, a true photograph wouldn't have worked for them. There's various grades of misrepresentation and I would compare it to a job CV. There's bits of information you could hide or it's kind of airbrush a little bit in the same way that someone might airbrush a pimple in a photo, which is not a permanent feature anyway. So you could sort of say, well, that's just hiding a bit of the truth. But if someone's gone to town and completely changed their, their photo on, on Photoshop extensively and there's agencies that you can pay to do that, then that might be viewed as a greater misrepresentation in the same way that you could totally edit your CV to, to include jobs that you'd never had. I think, I think as the internet's developed as a social tool, 
um, it's perhaps less likely now that people misrepresent themselves on traditional social networking sites like things like Facebook because most people on Facebook also know the people that they're friends with on Facebook. Whereas um, years ago with things like MySpace, your network consisted of pe many people who you may have never met. So it was easier to misrepresent and there's no consequences. Whereas now, uh, I think as the internet's mature as a platform, people are, are more honest. Just a kind of a f basic life philosophy level, it feels wrong for me. I feel like almost if you can't find someone by just going out there and meeting someone, you probably shouldn't have anyone, which is as, as brutal as that sounds. I feel like if I can't meet someone from face-to-face -face interaction, I probably should die alone because I'm probably a dick. Before online dating, we had personal ads in newspapers. Before that, one had to wait for an introduction to a potential mate through a mutual acquaintance. If dating etiquette has been through so many changes in the past, then what does the future hold for the online dating world? I think there is a tendency to romanticise the past, to imagine that in the old days people just judged each other on their personality and the beauty of their character and didn't care about looks, but uh, I don't think the human race would have survived if we were not interested in physical appearances and sexual attraction. I think technology makes it easier for us to be more honest about that, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think apps like Tinder, like Match.com, things like that, they are kind of like of the moment, but I think people will always use them to find like love or whatever. But um, yeah, I think the traditional way of just seeing someone you like, going up to them, talking to them, is it will always be there. Tinder is a fad and it will it'll just go out of fashion like every other app that's been. So I don't really think it will change much. I think online dating, you know, like to give to use Facebook as an example, has been around for a long time and it doesn't I, I'm not convinced it's gonna disappear. Lonely Hearts columns and newspapers are still around, even though most people would think, well, why are you using those? Because there's the internet. Um, so I, I don't think it's going to disappear. Whether it keeps the current format, I'm not so sure. Uh, things like Tinder seem to be almost making it quicker. Uh, so the idea of even having to fill out a profile is becoming, obvi people are obviously thinking that's too time consuming. But I think like most things online, it continues to evolve and develop. I, don't, I think people want to have relationships with other people and the internet's always been one way of doing that. So, and that's kind of what the internet was set up to do, was to help people communicate. So I can't see that going away. It's definitely possible to find love on the internet. There are lots of different people out there, so no matter what your interests are, and what your hobbies are, you'll find someone out there who shares a similarity with you. It's not for everybody meeting someone online, but it definitely works for a lot of people. As with any popular leap in technology, the future of online dating is unclear as we watch companies fight to keep ahead of the curve and develop with the trends. Will society's nostalgia for more traditional ideals of romance bring about the end of online dating? Or will it become the normal, accepted way of forming new relationships? Unfortunately, we cannot predict the future. But in the meantime, we might as well swipe right to online dating while the going is good.